y'all. This is my recap review of The Sister Wives, Season 5, Episode 4, Growing Up Polygamous. So the, we have three storylines going this episode. The first is Janelle and some of her weight loss stuff. Second is catching up with the, some of the teenagers. And third, last and definitely least, they're preparing for a trip to go to Missouri to meet a polygamous Christian family. So we're going to start with Janelle because she's my favorite. She's the quietest of the sister wives. She's the least likely to speak. She definitely seems the most logical. So when everyone else is getting real huffy about stuff, she's like, eh, I don't really think about it. You know, she's always kind of over it. She's the most financially responsible. All of that. I think, she, I think if we did a vote, she'd probably be the favorite wife. Anyway, she has been on this weight loss journey for about nine, ten months, and uh, she committed to her trainer to do a 30-day push. Unfortunately, at the end of it, she's gained about two, two pounds, and so he has this whole plan for really pushing her to succeed. So he has her write down what is keeping her from succeeding and fold it up, and um, at the end of the episode, we see him take her out to a mountain so that she can leave that behind, get to the top of the mountain and leave it behind. And... Um, She's really questioning about whether or not this is worth it. And uh, I, of course, am cheering her on. Her value as a person is not based on her body shape. So I don't, I just get that right out of the way. She's not, she won't be a better person if she loses weight. She won't be more valuable. But the fact that she is investing in herself, um, in her health, that she is taking the time to make herself a priority occasionally, to work out, to be healthier, to be more active, to give herself more options, that is important. So I'm really big. I hate body shaming. I hate when people discuss people's bodies. She's a beautiful person inside and out, regardless of her size. I'm just going to put that over there. Just be really clear about that. But I, the fact that she is investing in herself. Um, and we're seeing the personality change. We're seeing her be more assertive. We're seeing some other things. So anyway, she goes, I can totally climb that mountain. I can do it. It's super easy. And he's like, yes, but let's talk about going back to where you have been, like how far you've come this journey. He pulls out a weight vest with 25 pounds. She's like, I can't climb with that. And that's the amount she's lost, which surprised me because I would have thought she'd lost a lot more weight. She's clearly much, much stronger. Probably a lot of fat has been converted to muscle because you can really see it in her face. I would have guessed she was much smaller. But once again, that's not really the point. So she climbs this mountain and it's all symbolic and she gets halfway and he's like, this is where you are, you know, you're halfway to your goal and you're tired and you know, all that. So it was, it was good. I was happy. Go Janelle. Now, second part of the show, kind of right in the middle, we see the teenagers, we kind of catch up with them, talk about dating. We see Logan who wants to be a physical therapist. He's at UNLV. I was kind of surprised because he's living with a boyfriend, girlfriend um, as roommates. Um, I don't think anything funny is going on, but I was just kind of surprised because that girls like can't hold hands, but Logan's like cohabitate. I don't know. Uh, I mean, clearly there's nothing romantic going on. I was just surprised because usually those things people I've met where they're really uh, sexually conservative family is also like don't live with those the opposite sex. So. Anyway, we see him hang out. He has not decided on polygamy. He says most of his friends don't care one way or the other. Madison. We, Madison is the one who's dated the most. She hated the move. She's like, you can't make me go. It was clearly very emotional. Uh, Janelle got really emotional in the interview. But she also is the one who, who seems to have really, or one of the ones who's really embraced the opportunities of Las Vegas. So she's now student body president. She has all these options and she's kind of glad, but she will, she does want to return to Utah. I believe she's gotten a scholarship and accepted and everything. And she wants to be a lawyer. So go Maddie. Um, Aspen is a UNLV freshman. She wants to be a teacher and care for kids, which totally fits because we've seen her consistently through the season, always holding kids, helping. She loves all that, especially when Truly was sick. You really saw that she was a caretaker for Truly. Um, and she does not want to be a polygamist. I don't believe Madison does either. My notes don't say. Now, McKelty, she's always the one who likes a shock factor. She used to kind of dress scandalous. I say scandalous because... I think most of us have seen far more scandalous, but for her family's value system, she was definitely pushing that boundary. She's going to a special high, uh, high school college program where she'll graduate from high school with an AA. She um, is going to go into fashion design. She was the one who at the beginning of the season had the boyfriend that came over and Cody talked to. 
and I guess he they subsequently decided to just be friends. Um, I kind of think maybe Cody scared the guy off, and she really misses him. So, poor McKelty. Now, the last part of the episode, the family's preparing to go to Missouri over spring break to meet up with a Christian polygamist family. And I'm kind of like, meh. Um, I guess I'd be interested in meeting a Christian polygamist family or just another polygamist family in general. But it's clearly something they're just doing for the show. They're dragging along all the kids on their spring break. And I know the kids kind of have to be like, seriously, because of the TV show, we have to like lose our spring break with our family. The kids are not happy. And I don't like group travel because either someone's pushing you to hurry up because you're holding people up or you're ready to go when you're having to drag everyone else along. It's hard enough traveling with one other person, which I love doing, my husband, but we're talking about, I don't know, a dozen people. It just seems, it just seems like more trouble than it's worth. So, but I guess that's the next episode. So I will catch up with you guys soon.